Tony Carini, voice of West Virginia, and we will get into Tony and I will get into the Foster Pavilion momentarily. What a great text back and forth we've had the last two or three days. Tony, thank you for your time. What, uh, in your overall thoughts, uh, the uh, feedback on West Virginia's 2024 Big 12 football schedule? Uh, personally, I like it a lot. Uh, the way it breaks up, you play four, you have a break. You play four, you have a break. You play four, and the regular season is over. Um, there is no you know, unfair back-to-back -back road games. We do have that happen once, but we've got a buy-in between that and seven home games. So not a lot to complain about at all. Tony, uh, it is one of the tougher schedules, I think, in the country, though. But did last year maybe put fans at ease that, you know, when it looked at the beginning of the schedule with not knowing, you know, how this team was going to be, um, the way that they came through at 8-4, and four, does, it, does it put fans more at ease that they handled it last year and they've got more experience now coming back? Yeah, I, I think, Paul, what happened was we went into last season and it was one of those – who knows which way this thing is going to go. And we talked about the fact that West Virginia is one of the few teams in the country that plays um, 11 Power 5 teams. And we're going like, oh boy, what's going to happen here? But they found their way. Um, they finished 3-1 and one in that first month of the season, which included the road trip uh, to Penn State. And they beat Pitt here. Uh, they beat Texas Tech to start lead play. And they got out of the thing at 3-1. and one, And that really shifted it. And then they, they played. You know, they... They, they did a nice job. So the, the, short, the long answer to your short question is that I think the perception of the program uh, from a fan's perspective has shifted. You get the bowl victory as well. So you have a ninth win, and you've got returning guys that are going to be playmakers uh, on the offensive side of this football. And defense should be solid. And so I think you go at it now this year and say, okay, we don't have to go to Penn State. And they come here for the first time in Eon. And – that pit game is, to be quite honest with you, it almost is a quasi, dare I say, home game because West Virginia literally brings thousands and thousands and thousands of fans uh, to Pittsburgh. So it's as good as you can do with with having to play, um, you know, the, the two power fives out of your three and non-league play. Tony, we were just talking a little while ago about Big 12 and rivalries, and, and they're obviously protecting just a less than a handful of them and, and hoping that others will – kind of get going. I know that's been sort of hard for West Virginia over the years, being almost on an island by themselves. And I know the history with Cincinnati is not like, you know, you guys were playing year after year after year right. for decades and all of that. But to play them last year, did that, you know, ignite a little something that uh, playing them again this year maybe starts a, a little bit of a back and forth there that could be of interest? Yeah, I, I think perhaps it's going to be more of a geographic rivalry than it is going to be an emotional rivalry. Gotcha. If you know what I mean? Yeah. I, I think, I think rivalries are oftentimes the byproduct of something that happens that isn't nice. And I, you've got that obviously with over a hundred years with Pitt, but I do think you have to have, some, for example, uh, West Virginia's rivalry with Syracuse is, you know, decades and decades, but we had a fight against them in 92 that led to some ejections that were just totally um, unnecessary that cost West Virginia the game. Syracuse went right after the safety the very next game, and they win the game. And I mean, like, around here, that's like that game happened two weeks ago. <laughs> you, need to have, you need to have that. And I'll tell you another one. Although we're not going to play them anymore, Oklahoma uh, in basketball here a couple weeks ago, mm. they beat West Virginia, and – at the end of the game, you know, the student section started singing, hey, that's fine. That's how West Virginia ends. At Lloyd Noble. Well, you can imagine. Like, that pees, that pees people off because that comes from the university. So, had they stayed, then that would have been frothed up even more. So, Cincinnati, geographic rival, uh, UCF, geographic rival but we need to have some stuff off the side in order to make it like a true don't like them they don't like us tony how would you grade what ren baker has done in his time as ad there to this point superb he has you know he'll be the first to tell you that the thing that he thought he would have to handle was the neil brown situation and he's really happy he didn't have to do anything uh with neil brown that's one two 
Um, he navigated through what we're dealing with right now, and this is this basketball situation, mm -hmm. which all began last May uh, with Bob Huggins. And in a matter of six weeks, there were two situations that eventually led to his forced resignation. And we're in an interim status uh, right now, and it's, you know, this season. Uh, Josh Eilert, the interim coach, um, has been given this team. The roster got blown up in June. It only was returning 10% of its offense. He's been coaching this team with two hands behind his back. Uh, you guys follow this stuff closely. You know, it took a federal court ruling in December in order to get two of our guys eligible. We lose Jesse Edwards, uh, one of the premier big men in the country, to a broken wrist. He just came back last Saturday against Oklahoma State. Our other point guard, Kirk Carissa, sat out the nine games because of an NCAA suspension. So you can't make up what we've gone through in basketball. So Ren is going to have to do something, obviously, uh, in the next couple of months as the season comes to an end. On the other side of it, he hires a women's basketball coach, mm. and Mark Kellogg from Stephen F. Austin, who's now 18-2. and two. And that is an extremely bright future in women's basketball. He just made a great hire in women's volleyball with the Pac-12 imploding. He went out and got Washington State's coach who had gone to eight consecutive NCAA tournaments. So he's done everything that he can do. The populace has embraced him because he's embraced the populace, and fans really like him. So, so far, so good. Another long answer to your short question. All right, you have a game tonight, in fact, at home against Cincinnati. You, uh, of course, and I have talked about the Foster Pavilion. Mac Rhodes was on with us yesterday uh, Craig asked him about the pros and cons of the pavilion, which I've been inside of it. It is really a very unique and special place. But there has been chatter about the view of the <laughs> camera. And leading the way is Tony Caridi of West Virginia. I mean, with all due respect, with all due respect, I turn it on and I'm fired up to see this new arena. I never had any inclination whatsoever. What actually what I was able to do is diagnose all the pre Mal pattern baldness that's going on between both teams. <laughs> I mean, I mean, I had, to, I, I mean, by the second media timeout, I went and took a dram. I mean, I had to reload again at halftime. I mean, what are we doing? <laughs> what, I mean, at some point, at some point, when someone was walking around with the blueprint, when they're putting that thing together, did anyone ever stop and go like, and the camera at midcourt is going to be where? Yeah. Well, Tony, that's the thing. They, we had Scott Drew on the show the week the day well, we have him on it, but like we had him on that particular week, and Craig asked him like, "What do you think of it?" He's like, "Well, we've only been in there two days before their first game, so the coach had only been in there two times before no, the I thing was open. So because they they went so fast in this, and it's not completely done anyway, there were a lot of things that there well, was no walk around Mac, for in their kind of Mac Rhodes yesterday. He Craig asked the question. Mac Rhodes said that he understands the concerns. It can't be fixed overnight. There's a couple of tweaks they've done already, but it will be addressed without a doubt during the off season. And I sent you a text to make sure you knew that. <laughs> well, I knew this. I knew there was one man that could fix it. I knew it'd be you. Well, I mean, I just one guy, one guy that could do it. Now, I kid because I love, but that was like, oh, you got to be kidding me. That was old school Oklahoma State view, and I yes. never liked that either. Yeah, yeah. no, it, it, it's going to be taken care of. We appreciate you, Tony. I know you got a game to get ready for tonight. Thank you so much for your time. Good luck. All right, guys. You take care. Tony Caridi, voice of West Virginia. I sent him a note. Hey, can you join us on what? 